Hi everybody, welcome to another edition of the Rose Jewel Railroad. I have a fun one planned for you this evening. Just to explain the engines we are going to talk about this evening. Um, these all, I have four sets I'm going to talk about tonight. Uh, on the inner loop, we have a 2037. This one was cataloged in 1960. Excuse me, this is an uncatalogued set from 1960. And on the metal loop, we have a 2037. This was cataloged in 1958. And on the inner loop, we have a 2026 right here. And this one was cataloged in 1952. On the honorary sighting tonight, I have engine number 1110. This is a Scout Loke set. This one was cat this particular set was cataloged in 1951 and 1952. I apologize, I can't get real good pictures of it because it's getting a little crowded in here. But I also have the books out this evening. So for that uncatalogued set, there it is. X-506 and A, 1960. And uh, I actually do have everything it came with. I'll get into that more later. Um, my 2037 set, this is the 1958 catalog. And uh, there it is. As you can see, it was, uh, its counterpart is the famous pink girl strain. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, my 2036 right there. This is the 1952 catalog. And if I turn the page, you will also see the Scout there in 1952, and there's the Scout in 1951. Boy, if they could only be priced like that today. This book, by the way, uh, I bought online. It covers uncatalogued sets. And I have to say, this book is simply outstanding. I don't know about you, but I have bought a lot of train books that just don't tell me much or do much. I got to look and see if this author did a catalog version. Because it is hard to find information on un uncatalogued sets even you know you can google it and search it you just ain't gonna find it but this guy did a very good job it's all in here um i mean the book retailed for like 90 i found it on the bay for like 40 which is uh in my eyes pretty pricey for a book but wow i mean it is it is really good so Anyways, I'm not here to talk about the book. I'm here to talk about the trains. Um, here they are, and I think I'll get them running. Thank you. 
Now my 22037 sets, the one on the inner loop and the one on the middle loop, uh, they they both smoke and uh, they both have magnet traction. Of course, headlights and whatnot. My 2026 on the outer loop is a, uh, we would say, uh, a more economical set. That one's got all the same things except it uh, does not have magnet traction. And just to talk about the Scout here a little bit, um, of course this was the economical bottom dollar set. Um, you know, I, it's been a good set for me. Um, these are known to have the E-switch problem. It flops around. Some people will actually find a motor from the newer model and it does not have that problem. Personally, I just take a black rubber band and, and it just goes forward only. I, I just try to keep it original that way. I'm going to talk about my connection with each one of these sets. That's uh, one thing I like to do, and uh, I find it interesting. When even when I buy trains from people, you know, of course I usually get them secondhand. I'm always asking the history of it. Was it grandpa's? Was it your dad's? You know, are you getting out of the hobby? I just kind of want to know a little bit about the exact pieces I am buying. Now, the middle loop, the 2037 set, the longer one that's got the uh, uh, 1955 Fords on it, that one is very special to me. That is a childhood set of mine. That one showed up with this Scout set. The story behind it is, there was a, oh, kids I used to grow, grow up with and play with and whatnot. I was about 10 years old at the time and uh, their family was having a garage sale. And they told me that uh, their dad was selling his Lionel trains. And of course, Obviously, I was interested. And uh, so I got that set and the other set, I was, the Scout set I was talking about. The only thing is, I mean, okay, this is long about 1980. So it was at a garage sale and all this, the, the two sets plus this LW Transformer and uh, this old icing station. This is one from the 1950s. I actually got a newer one too. But anyways, the stuff was not in the greatest of shape. And, but he had everything just kind of thrown in the trunk with track and transformer and whatnot and uh, it was twenty dollars the only catch to it was the original 2037 engine that was in there he pulled it out and said you can have everything for twenty dollars but you can't get that engine and I was really disappointed 
because uh, I had everything up to that point. I had steamers. I had excuse me. I had Lionel. I had Marks. But everything I had was like this. It had four drive wheels. And that was the very first one I seen that had six drive wheels. So anyways, I got it. I got the, uh, the rest of the set. I never did have the tender either. I don't know if that, if he pulled that out, if it was so broken up, it just wasn't in there. But I, I got them in later years. I'll get to that. Um, I think I'm gonna stop it to explain the rest of the story. All right, so like I said, these two, he, he pulled this out and said, uh, you can't have that, blah, blah, blah. And this, I don't know whatever happened to it, it was MIA. I had this car right here, but I did not have the automobiles. I did have this car. I believe I had to do a little bit of work to it. I had this flat car, but this transformer was just laying in the box. I had no idea where it went. I had this car but I did not have the canisters. I had the caboose, but it was in pieces. So, here it is, only probably three, four years ago, I'm getting back in the Lionel train. I thought, boy, what would it take me to get really back into it? I said, well, I'd like to put that 2037 set back together. And that's, the, I didn't even know it was a 2037. So I got on the internet and I had enough of the cars I could figure out that hey, that missing engine that I seen years ago was a 2037. I mean, I didn't make a mental note of uh, what number was on that engine. So I figured I waited about 40 years for this engine and tender. So I got in the bay and I bought a pretty nice set. <coughs> Just engine and tender. This one came with the boxes. So I, I was pretty proud of that. And uh, the smoke unit was broke on it. I took it to my post war guy and uh, he put a smoke unit on it. Okay, moving down the line. Now, like I said, I had this, but I did not have the automobiles. But I had this. Honestly, I always assumed that this was part of this because it was flat and it kind of looked like it belonged to that. But then when I started looking things up on the internet, guess what? I figured out, hey, this is supposed to be attached to this. And guess what? I'm supposed to have a couple automobiles. So I get on the bay, buy a couple automobiles. And, uh, you know, this car, I guess, was, you know, just had to fix it a little bit. Glued this back on, bought some canisters canisters and of course I had to replace the caboose. So this I have eight trains from my childhood and this is one of them and of course this scout over here is one of them too. These two came together. I have had those two since about 1980. Uh, just going over to scout a little bit uh, I had the Scout, it always did work. Just in more recent years, I, I don't know what, but uh, Lionel did to these rods back in 1950. But if you notice on the bay or on the internet, you really can't find good shiny rods for an original Scout anymore. So what I did, as I got on the bay, and this engine is about the same chassis. It's just a plastic, newer plastic version of this. This 8040 was uh, early 70s MPC era. So anyways, I just got on the bay and bought some uh, uh, 
rods that were meant for something like that. And I put it on there and it looked a lot better. Uh, this original tender, I got it, but it was it was stepped on or something. It was all bent up, so I had to get on the bay and buy that. Uh, I did have this, this uh, car here. I did have this box car. It was bent up a bit. And again, I had to go on the bay and buy this caboose because it was all busted up. Now, one thing about these Scouts here is they've got different couplers than, uh, you know, normal trains do. Um, I don't know why Lionel do, did that. I'm sorry I didn't research it before this video. But, you know, in, in a way, I think that was their biggest mistake because being a starter set you know bottom dollar it gets you started and then you, your kid is interested in it and then all of a sudden you know stuff is not interchangeable with this and i think this is what happened here you know the, the kid's father that i knew obviously got this one first in 52 or whatnot 51 52 and then 58 he was interested in and got the nicer set and uh, obviously he had the LW transformer and the icing station uh, he took a little interest in it but uh, yeah so that's the set the story about those two there Let's get it going again here All right, let me tell you the story about the other 2037 in the middle there. I haven't had that one for very long. I've had that probably two, three weeks. Um, I was on Craigslist and that train came with everything. It had, I mean, I could go around and show you, but everything that's in this photo i got and, you know the instruction and the the signs and the track and the boxes the the uh, magazine uh I, yeah I, I got the transformer too but anyways it was it was listed on craigslist and they only wanted 75 dollars for it for a box like that I thought oh my goodness I you know I had I thought I was gonna be too late I you know I I, I started texting right away and uh, emailing you know he didn't have his number you just had to email and he didn't get back to me for a day or two I thought oh my gosh he sold it you know I'm, I'm too late and finally he got back to me while I was at work and he says, yeah, I got it. You know, it was not too far away. And uh, I tried not to sound over anxious, but I was, I wanted to go pick it up right away, you know. I didn't want to lose it for $75. And then I started thinking to myself, my gosh, he's going to get on the internet and figure out, you know, that that set's got to be, I don't know, two, $300 set. And he's going to want... You know, he's gonna back out of the deal. So I gotta get over there right away. Well, I get over there, and this is one of the the ritzy parts. I'm in Wisconsin, and this is one of the ritzy parts of Wisconsin. You know, it's uh, just outside Madison in this uh, <coughs> village called Wanakee. Well. Not only was this in Wanakee, but it was in a real ritzy part of Wanakee, a brand new neighborhood. And I'm driving up past all these half million dollar houses. Well, I get to this house and this house is, stands out in the middle of all the rest of the houses. This is, this is easy, a seven, eight hundred thousand dollar house. And I, did check what it sold for and yeah the last time it sold on the internet it was like over seven hundred thousand and uh 
his pretty young wife comes out and she just says, well, the kids weren't interested at Christmas time. It was my husband's, you know, during, it was his grandpa's, but we're, we just, we're gonna get rid of it. And so yeah, I looked it over quick and I bought it. I noticed later that the helicopter was missing. And uh, I had uh, emailed him and I was like, well, you know, I'd like to have the original helicopter if you got it. You know, you can send it to me COD and and uh, I'll pay it. Or, you know, maybe I can make another trip out there. It's not that far for me. But uh, I thought, well, he'll never get back to me. And he said, oh, I'll look for it. And I thought, well, yeah, I, I know what that means. But a couple days later, he found it. And he just sent it right out to me, you know. So it cost him like five bucks to send it to me. So, you know, he only made... 70 bucks on the deal, but like I said, anybody that lives in a house like that just wasn't worried about what they were getting for it. Uh, okay, the story behind the 2026 going around, um, that was a Craigslist find also. Um, that one actually was in Minnesota. I'm in Wisconsin. I just kind of took a chance and contacted him and I said hey you know uh, if you if you'd like to uh, sell it to me I can give you I can't remember if I offered him 10 15 dollars more than he was asking of course I didn't even go best offer I went full price you know and uh, um, he agreed and sent it to me that, you know, I think that was like a $75 set. This is in really pristine shape. And uh, as soon as I got it, I put it on the layout and ran it around. And uh, I, I sent him a copy of uh, it going around. Um, and it was kind of moving a little bit. He said it was his, uh, his wife's brother's set. And uh, he had since passed, so. He was, he was kind of happy to see it went to a good home. Somebody was going to enjoy it, not just turn around and try to sell it. But anyways, I guess I'll shut up for a little while and just uh, run the trains here. That's one thing I forgot to mention about that 2026 set going around. It uh, does not have a whistle on it. Um, I'll stop it here just a second. It's got the hole in the tender, but there's there's absolutely nothing in there. You know, it's a more of an economical set.
Anyways, I guess I better turn this uh, video in. That's getting to be a little bit long. But uh, thank you for watching. This has been a run session of the Rose 2 Railroad. And um, actually a more of a critique, I guess, about these engines. Uh, obviously, I did the, the two 2037s because they're the same. And the, the 2026 is uh, the same body style. And, uh, of course, my Scout, because uh, I always have a connection between that Scout and the uh, main 2037 right here coming around, because uh, I got them together. So, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you liked it. And uh, I really enjoy comments. And uh, if you want to subscribe, I could use a few more subscribers. And uh, I am just having a blast uh, doing these videos. So. And I have got plenty more trains like this to run. I, I have got Lionel and MPC, MCH, Marks, and I got some Williams, so I like it all. And thank you very much for watching. Uh, this has been the Rose 2 Railroad. Have a good day or a good evening. Thank you very much. Bye now.